I'm Dr. Benjamin Alush from IRT Jouverne, and today I'm here uh, with you to share my experiences in ROS. This talk will focus on the design and the control of 6 DOF manipulator dedicated for the welding application. I start this presentation by a brief introduction of the IRT Jouverne, our motivation through this project, and then I will, uh, I will focus on the work that had been done. The IIT Jouverne is an industrial and collaborative research center dedicated to manufacturing. We are located in the west of France, more precisely in Nantes. Our work cover a various fields of the industry and mainly we stand out in the four key sectors, which are aeronautic, automotive, naval and energy. The IRT ecosystem with its uh, cross-scale technical resources and agility helps to bridge the gap between the industrial and the academic world through innovative industrial projects. Within this presentation, I'm running out of time to introduce all our teams, but uh, what should be underlined is that the IRT provide a complete solution around manufacturing from modeling and simulation to NDT and from metallic to composite process. In this context, the robotic team uh, helps to address issues around the mobility and industrial environment and the FMS, flexible manufacturing system. We are 22 researchers and two head of research with complementary background, working around five major themes, which are cover driven parallel robots, visual servoing and deep learning, simulation and virtual commissioning, mobility and embedded algorithm, and finally, lightweight mechatronic solutions. After this uh, brief introduction, let's go back to the main topic. I guess most of you already know that the welding process has been robotized in some industry. This is especially true for the automotive sector where the parts are not too thick, they are movable, and the welding operation are highly repeatable in a mass production process. But what about the shipbuilding industry? Here the parts are huge and not mobile at all. In this case, the robot should work in a very constrained environment and due to the size of the part and the assembly constraint, we often end with the non-controllable tolerances, which really complicate the offline trajectory planning. All this make the welder's flexibility unavoidable, which is not without consequences for the welder's health or and productivity. Some studies show that the welder in this environment spend more time looking for a comfortable welding position than lightening up the welding torch. But despite that, uh, some solution already exists. Obviously, the, the use is limited to a few use cases, but with the growth of uh, zero programming techniques, artificial intelligence and percep uh, perception, we have no doubt that in a few years we will have a fully autonomous robot able to perform the welding operation without any external intervention. But until then, we need some solution to improve the welder's daily life. In this context, the startup with you welding created by former employees of Chantier de l'Atlantique came to see us with the idea of designing a robot or a welding tool that allows the operator to remotely control the welding task. The idea appears simple, but the challenge is not. Let's take a look closely. Our robot should weigh around five kilograms, so the operator can carry it on their shoulder without any problem. It should be ready in eight months with the limited resources. To give you a small idea, we had only two full-time engineers for the technical parts to carry out the mechanical design, software development, and tests. And as we started from the scratch, the most appropriate choice would uh, have been to go through the theory, some simulation, partial test, and then the global test. But for cost constraint and deadlines, we just said, okay, let's do it in a way to get a maximum of feedback to improve the upcoming version of the robot. Obviously, this choice is a bit risky and could easily be turned into like a sharing in the dark. The sizing process took around a couple of weeks from some relevant welding trajectories provided by the startup. A short list of on the shelf actuator uh, was set. 
We did some iteration between kinematics and dynamic in order to choose the most suitable actuator. Uh, the, the kinematic was identified with ROS thanks to ROSBOT SIM, which is a homemade graph based motion planning developed within another project. As you probably know, a six axis manipulator is a redundant robot with respect to the welding process. So, for this reason, we use the ROSBOT SIM in order to explore all the feasible trajectories while imposing some optimization criteria such as manipulability. So, from a configurable URDF, the desired Cartesian trajectory, we are tested via ROSBOT SIM. This operation was done several times with different kinematic parameters, and at the end, a statistical study allowed to identify a set of kinematic parameters. From the identified kinematic, the dynamic was roughly studied with Coppelia SIM. The torque velocity response were plotted with respect to the characteristic of the candidate actuator. And finally, we chose the Kinova actuator with some additional planetary gear. Let me be clear about one thing. Uh, during the sizing process, the most relevant sizing parameter was the weight of the actuator. So we were open for all control architecture, whether based on ROS or, or, some, or on industrial automate. Basically, from a hardware point of view, the chosen actuator are uh, the same as those used for the control of the Jacko robot from Kinova. This actuator communicates with the, the serial bus RS-485. The use of level-level API uh, function was not obvious because we couldn't find the data frame documentation. And regarding the high-level API, uh, they were developed for the Jacko purpose, so their use for a custom robot was not immediate. Moreover, given the deadline, it was just not possible to start from a such low level. And we had other equipment and notes to add for, uh, for all this reason, ROS was the, uh, our best option. Uh, the provided the ROS uh, driver from Kinova communicate with the motor at a frequency of 100 Hertz. So we, we had to measure the chain time before starting the development. Don't forget that this robot is foreseen to, for the remote welding operation. The actuator were mounted in a stack thanks to 3D printed interfaces as shown in the top right photo. This allowed to validate our development on hardware in a safe way. The twist commands were generated using a joystick and then the response of the actuator was measured. The goal was to check that the actuator react faster than the operator's perception, estimated around 100 milliseconds. Once the time chain was checked, we started the software development. On one hand, we had, we, we had the robot kinematic on Ervis in order to check the consistency of the command. On the other hand, the, uh, the stacked actuator at the same time, the mechanical design was, was pro progressing independently. In order to, vi to visualize the robot's movement on Ervis, a fake velocity controller has been uh, developed. For the jog mode, a node based on a KDL was de developed, but immediately dropped in favor of Movit Servo, which is a much more complete package able to handle the jog mode but also to manage the behavior of the robot close to singularities. Now let's take a look on the Kinova driver. The official Kinova driver was good starting point for uh, the job mode. It's able to send the uh, speed uh, or position command to the joint. However, to execute a trajectory, an action is sent to the, uh, the, to the Kinova controller who takes care of the inverse kinematic and the synchronization of the axis. This operating mode is perfectly adapted for the Jacko robot, but for a custom robot, the kinematic inside uh, the controller become wrong. Moreover, <coughs> uh, all the internal control loops were set for the Jacko, uh, for the Jacko robot. In order to overcome uh, this issue, the Kinova driver has been upgraded to meet the ROS control requirement, three interfaces have been defined for whether for the control of position, speed, and the torque. 
Now let's take a look to the control scheme. Our robot has three operating mode, the manual mode, which is a classical job mode, so velocity command is sent to the joint, an automatic mode in this case from a trajectory executor, a set of points is generated and sent to the uh, ROS control who calculate the velocity command. The last mode is the semi-automatic mode. It works like uh, an automa uh, the automatic one, uh, except that during the execution, the correction given by the welder to the joystick is seen as an external input to be added to the calculated command. Obviously, this controller is not common in, robo uh, in, is not common in robotics. It would have been more, uh, uh, more logical to target the motor in torque in order to compensate the dynamic. But as the welding process is relatively slow, ROS1 is not real time, and the, uh, and the communication frequency is relatively low, around 100 hertz, a torque-based controller would have a big chance to fail. That's why we prefer to work over the velocity loops to keep a stable behavior with a minimum of turning. To tune, <clears throat> To tune the previous controller, we used plot juggler to display uh, signals and dynamic and dynamicer configure for the online turning of the game. As the control was set uh, as a single input, single output for each axis, the Ziegler Nichols method was used uh, for the setting of the game. At the end, we got a position control with a steady error less than 0.16%. Uh, as we kept the speed loop in the Kinova controller uh, for, for the reason mentioned in the previous slide, a small delay was generated, but this one was not really significant in the welding range of motion. After discussing the low level, uh, let's take a look on how we orchestrated the overall behavior of the robot. The state machine ha uh, uh, has been made with the uh, Python tra transition package. This helped to simplify the definition of all the action performed uh, by the robot to reach or to leave a given state. We distinguish three relevant uh, states: the manual one, uh, the manual one, allow to control the robot manually through a joystick in order to define the welding task. The automatic or the semi-automatic one allow to perform the welding operation. Finally, this state machine has been controlled by a graphical user interface, allowing to provide all the robot features, such as power on off, reset, manual mode, water performing in the tool or the base frame. For example, to perform a welding operation, the robot is moved manually to a target, uh, targeted waypoints. Those waypoints are saved and used for the plan request. If we choose the automatic mode, the robot executes simply the trajectory. If we choose the semi-automatic mode, during the execution, the welder can adjust the trajectory according to the, his assessment. Obviously, there is still many other nodes that we didn't present, uh, we're not presenting on this uh, talk, such as the management of the welding torch or the monitoring node based on a uh, rose bag and so on. If you, if someone is interested, we can, we, we can have a discussion around this later. Now let's go to the final results. This slide show the results of our project. We end up with a six DOF manipulator Weighing around 6.5 kilogram, able to carry a load around 3.5 kilogram, distributed between the welding torch and the welding harness. The welding tests were carried out in the lab environment, and uh, the tests on the industrial environment were focusing only on the manipulability of the robot and the accessibility on the production site. Uh, now. I suggest you a small video to clarify what has been said before. Uh, here you can uh, here you can uh, here you can notice the operator 
the, the semi-automatic mode where the operator can push uh, in or slow down the welding torch during the execution of uh, the movement. Here we can we can notice the the, the execution of li line trajectory and uh, the manipulation of the robot on the production uh, sites. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> finally. Finally, the welding application. This photo show, shows the, the, the welding results carried out by our robot. OK, finally, to conclude this talk, I would like to specify uh, that on a personal level, this is my first cross application. I found the tool very powerful. Uh, in only a few months, we have gather, uh, gathered a different technological module and made a complete application. Obviously, we have noticed some limitation, especially with regards of uh, ROS Control 1. That's why in the next step, we will switch to ROS 2 in order to better handle the real-time issue and to push the robot's control a little further. Thank you for your attention and I'm all here for your questions.